Dude, what's going on, guys? Juan, what's going on? Lexi, what's going on? Caleb, how you doing? Ogtug, thank you so much for the tier one, dude. Thanks for being such a positive force in my life. Bro, thank you for being here in mine. At Alex Otto's, thanks thank for you, being thank such you, a positive force in my life. Dude, the setup tour is coming just like the switch lubing tutorial. Um, I've pretty much done the script for the switch lubing tutorial now. So that's gonna be like full force recording. I'm hoping even tomorrow. We'll see what I do. Uh, but soon, guys, soon. I pinky, like I said, by by end of year, you'll have both and more stuff. I just want a key cult 265. There was a key cult raffle recently. Damn, Chaser. Damn, dude. How you doing, man? Hello, sir. Hello, guys. Uh, Kohaku, what's going on, dude? What is up? Oh, let's put this actually here. Oh, today has been a uh, wild day of we uh. We're, I didn't realize shopping for Christmas lights for a tree was so tough. There's so many different options and it says warm light on the box, but doesn't actually mean that. But God, dude, all this spent like 20 bucks on fucking Christmas lights. It's crazy. Uh, hello, Karan. How you doing, dude? Chaser, hello, how are you, dude? Good, sir. You handsome ass. Dude, wait, it didn't read yours out. I learned so much from you. I got my QK60. Ooh, we're doing the QK75 uh, today, actually. Although we do have to take it apart here. I'm thinking we actually might just reuse the switches or the keycaps from this build. Um, kind of light and sound on this particular build. Cause again, we did use a switch that was kind of light and sound. So kind of hoping with the new switch, it'll be fine. I was modding my mode 80 and my daughter board cable broke. Oh no, how did you do that? Oh no. I was about to go on a date with a girl that stood me up yesterday, but I'm just to tell her Alex is building a keyboard. Wait, see, was there a good reason why she stood you up? Was like, are you going out again with, was it like a emergency reason? I don't want, I don't want my, my, my people here to, you know, be played. You know what I'm saying, guys? I spent $30 for Christmas lights and the light barely lights up. Oh no. She spaced it. Like she just forgot. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like, I guess it can happen. Wait, why is this knocked over? I guess it can happen, but. <sighs> well, we don't know that occult. Something might have like come up that was more important. Like the only thing I would suggest is don't make assumptions. Maybe like hear her out. Who knows? It could develop into something amazing, but definitely keep your eyes open, my friend. Uh, Christmas, we did. I'll take a picture of it once it's done. Dude, we bought, mind you, I think the pack of Christmas ornaments we bought was like $12.99 Canadian, which is like, I know it's like $3 US. But we bought Christmas bowls or whatever ornaments. And I, you have to like feed the string in to the thing yourself and like tie it all up. Dude, my fingers don't work for that, man. So I sat there for like, I think an hour and a half today. And I think I tied up all of maybe like 15 Christmas ornaments, Christmas balls, whatever you want to call them. Bro, they're like, I, I don't know, man. I'm not good at doing that stuff. Uh, the exchange rate is killer. It is, dude. You should get those metal ones from Dollarama. Do they have those things pre-installed? Those little loops? Jingle balls? <laughs> What's going on, me? How you guys doing? Pancake, do you have uh, any issues with the QK75 backspace? Can't say I have. Clip a leg on their switch. I can't say I've had that happen. Actually, while we're talking here, I'm gonna start taking things apart. What did you guys do today? Oh wait, this gets taken apart this way. What did you guys do today? I hope something fun. Um, Cause if not, hopefully, the whole night gets better or day gets better. Friendsgiving? Oh yeah, it's like, well, no, isn't that next week for you guys? Thanksgiving? Oh, wrong button, sorry guys. Come on, camera, focus please. Inflectra. Hope you are well, my guy. Thank you for being you. I'm gonna actually put all the keycaps like, right here. Thank you, Inflectra, I appreciate you, dude. Drove my parents to the airport for their vacation. Honestly, probably well-deserved, right? Vacation right now, this time of year, sounds uh, beautiful. 
Isa, you want a compliment? You know what else sounds beautiful, but all year round? You, I hope you're having a great day today, dude. I hope your Saturday has went absolutely fantastical. Indeed, they've been working constantly for the past two years. That's good. Honestly, that's an amazing thing. To, to earn that, that's great. Posture check. Oh, God, dude, my back's killing me. Bro, I went to buy a car with my dad and the guy, we were buying it from Flaked and we drove four hours for no reason. Like they, they just didn't show up to like sell it to you? Was it like a dealership or was it like an individual? That's weird. That's so weird, dude. Uh, was the parallel array a group buy? I, th I think it's in stock, is it not? What's up, Insty? By the way, hello everybody. Wanted to go see uh, Autumn Leaves in National Park, forgot cash for the tickets. Wait, correct me if I'm wrong. You have to go pay to get into a park? I, I don't know the way it works everywhere because I think most parks here you can just walk into. Or is it like a fenced off area or something like that? Petardo, how you doing, dude? Is there a macro pad you recommend? Okay, so there are a few. You can go with like the Stellar um, if you want something acrylic. I think the Stellar is kind of cool too because it does have RGB like every which way that you look at that thing. Or alternatively, which I'm going to show you guys, like I had KBD fans send me over one. Um, the KBD fans numpad is great for making into a macro pad. Davery, thank you so much for the prime, dude. I appreciate that, man. Thank you, thank you. National parks in the US, you have to pay for most of the time? Oh, okay, I did not know that. Yeah, I did not know that, guys. DWC, thank you so much for the tier one, bro. Almost one year? Bro, we're getting there. We, we are indeed getting there, my friend. And thank you guys for the follows, too. Uh, maybe it just sold out then? sure what are the IEMs you're wearing ah okay I'm gonna change these out soon thank you Almost again DWC. One year. Thanks, thanks man. for being such a good dude dude I just want to tell you guys like I appreciate all of you guys who come here and like give me compliments but like you guys should really be giving yourself those compliments uh their campfire Andromedas I had them for a while now honestly I'm thinking about just like selling these off or just like I don't know they're they're great but I think there are better IEMs for better price points also, a lot of the green anodization on this is just completely chipped off. Mind you, I have been a little bit rougher with it, so... I would probably, like the ones that are linked in the headphones thing is the ones I would recommend. If you are planning on spending a lot of money on IEMs. That, or just get some like Moondrop areas or something. Boba U4s or Machas? I'm gonna be honest, I'd go with the Machas myself. Honestly. What's up, sir? Not too much today, man. Today was today was spent doing something that I I, hey, I love. Hey, Beckett from the meetup. Was Beckett. so fun talking to you. Dude, can Ford I just looks say, sick. Dude, I need to tell you guys about my experience with Beckett, dude. He is like I think I kind of told you guys, but didn't say names because I didn't want to like name someone who maybe didn't want to be named. Legitimately pure passion from this kid, man. Like. Beckett, you are fucking awesome to talk to, man. I fucking loved talking to you the entire time there. Um, but just like he showed up, had some amazing boards. You can tell like he was just so passionate and he was just so happy to be there, man. Like I think Beckett legitimately, like I was already having a great time, but he like brought it a bar up from how much of a good time I was having. Like it was, dude, it was just so cool seeing someone with so much like passion, man. It was, it was awesome. Like you can tell Beckett wanted to be there. Did you get a Ven? No, I did not. Dude, I've already, I bought some other keyboard stuff, so. Geo? Oh. Is my camera lagging? Why is this happening to me today? Um, are you able to remove the keycaps easily in GMK looser than other keycaps? I don't know. Is it F? Super laggy? Okay, is it better now? I don't know if it's better now. Geo too strong? Lagging hard? I think it was internet, because I just got a warning that there was an internet drop for like two seconds. Hold on, let me do something real quick. Stream is like, are we good now? Okay, we're good now. Let me do something real quick, guys. I'm just gonna reset these cameras really quickly. So I was reading up 
that apparently the cam links on both Windows and Mac are having like issues in some cases where you can completely disconnect them. Like if you start up the cam links, and this is also the problem on the other computer, if you start up the cam, cam links from like a cold boot um, without them having like, without them being on, it just doesn't like it. Well, I'm just gonna do this really quick, guys. I don't understand why it is, but I, I mean, it's a nuisance, but it is what it is, I guess. So we'll just deal with it as we go. Thank you again, Gio, for stopping by, man. I appreciate you always. Um, is that Gio the man who did 200 push-ups yesterday? Can I just, can I just say that Gio, okay, listen, I'm gonna tell you guys the honest truth right now. I was watching Gio effortlessly. I'm talking like fucking effortlessly doing push-ups, right? And I'm sitting there like, man, I can probably effortly, effortlessly do like four to five push-ups. And I just really got to, like, I, I think I had like a moment yesterday where I'm just like thinking about my own life and I'm like, I don't know if this is it, man. <laughs> and he's just sitting there like not, he was like barely breaking a sweat when he was like doing his 400th push up. I swear to God, man. Crazy. Absolutely wild to me. All right, let's unscrew these. I can barely survive 10 push ups. Me too. I, tr I remember I was on this like phase where I was trying to do like planks and stuff like that. Okay, I don't know why this camera now is being so slow. Oh God, dude, honestly, everything else seems okay. Yeah, this camera's fine. It's just this top-down camera. Uh, give me one sec, guys. I'm gonna try finding this out. That's me upside down. That's the wrong camera. That's also the wrong camera. All right, there we go. I think we're good now. You just need to like reset them sometimes. I don't understand. Uh, do wall push-ups? No, dude, I was trying to do planks for a while because I thought planks were really, I don't know if planks are really good. There's a vignette in the bottom right of your camera. Oh, that's not, that's just my microphone. As Guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. I knew I was streaming today, but I didn't really well plan it out. I was just kind of like, oh, we're just gonna do a rebuild. I already did everything, so like lube the switches. So we're just gonna effortlessly turn stream on. And then I'm like, yeah, that wasn't so effortlessly, effortlessly today. Uh, thoughts on Hamu Heartbeats. Okay, and this desk pad is not liking this at all today either. Okay, we'll use side view. Um, I have not tried them. Getting my delivery for them on uh, Monday. I have not tried them yet. Any exercise is exercise though. Yeah. I was reading this really interesting article and maybe this is, again, like I'm just gonna, I love you guys wherever you guys are in life before we start this conversation, but I was reading this article uh, not too long ago about if you are suffering from depression or um, like really heavy anxiety and stuff like that, one really important thing to do is make a habit of brushing your teeth. Um, and the reason they say that is because like you can help develop other really good habits and they even like stress that any amount of time you do brush your teeth even though you might have like not have the willpower to do so is like just good. So definitely an interesting read there. Guess I'll pop back in with my take on them if I ever catch an answer. Yeah, let me know how you like them. I haven't tried them yet. There's a few switches I've been wanting to try, but either they've just sold out really quickly or I just haven't had the chance to actually give them a fair proper go. Oh, you know what? I forgot to turn on one of the lights. It's okay. We'll just leave it like this today. <sighs> Um, they're not mushy like other silent switches. Which one? The heartbeats? All right. Also, I think I'm gonna grab a new set of stabs. I was thinking maybe we can just desolder this tonight, but I kind of don't feel like going through all this trouble. And let's grab these. We need these as well. We do indeed need these guys. Hello, King. No, King, you are the king here. Can you test SA on to see if there's any interference with the case? Can I ask a question? Is is it is there like people reporting interference with case with, with the QK75? 
I was under the impression that only in, like, uh, I guess creators had this. Really neat mode is working on Otemu with these. Oh, the switches? Okay, let's move this to the side. So these are what we used last time. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys. These are super smooth, but they are really quiet. And I don't know if this was the right choice for this case. This case definitely has a little bit more of a quietness to it. And I suspect the quietness, and I know we taped them up, is these vertical flex cuts, which you guys can kind of see. So I suspect just with a lot of other QK Owl Labs products, it's typically these flex cuts that really uh, make them a bit more quiet. What's super smooth? You're super smooth. Cool question, um, but are the feet adhesive? That's a great question, I can't seem to remember. They are indeed adhesive. Solder the flex cuts and they'll be good. Would that actually work? They don't have mushy stoppers on them. Instead, the stem rails are cut differently, if that makes sense. Oh, the um, other silent switches? That's what I need, stops. The only thing I did not grab in preparation today because I wasn't sure if I needed them. Let me just quickly grab a sec, guys. if I had a pink pair, but I guess I don't. Torn between the green and mint. As long as it's quiet, it'll be fine with it. Oh, for silent switches? I don't, know, I don't know what I'm vibing with outside of like linears right now. I think I've enjoyed a lot of different things, but I think I still keep coming back to one singular thing, and that is, I really like my KTT roses. Do I only have one wire in here and is this the right wire? I started coffee short and I can't wait for you to get deeper into the rabbit hole. So I've discovered some mistakes I've been making from the few months. Well, I've been used, trying it for a few months. And last week, dude, I noticed like I was making a huge mistake. And I guess what I, well, what I noticed was I was, um, I, when I cleaned the grinder, I noticed that I was grinding too coarse. So that was, Interesting to say the least that I noticed that. We'll also do mid plate film today. What stabs are we using? We're using the Wuche stabs today. Yes, I will say that QK60 right now is still my favorite iteration of all the QKs. Actually, I'm curious, does this? Oh, it does have the flex cuts on the hot swap unit. So this is the hot swap unit today. There'll be no soldering. We still have the flex cuts. It is a fixed space bar, so it is 6.25U. I don't know if the other one was fixed as well, I can't remember. We do have split backspace on this though. We do have step caps and regular caps. It's an LED indicator for both. Um, no ISO on this though. I don't know if they're gonna be offering an ISO hot swap unit, but interesting. The QK60 I think was the best iteration of QKs I have yet tried. I really like the 60. Um, we're gonna see, today I'm gonna use the mid plate phone. Best DJ in the game. Bro, I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Let me turn down the music a little bit. Thank you, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that, dude. I try my best. I really do. All right, we're gonna use the FR4 plate today. And let's loop some stops. So what do we need, four total? Use all the foam? No. We already know what all the foam's gonna sound like, though. It definitely is a bold statement, but I still think I personally really enjoyed the QK65 out of everything. Chat and Alex, am I correct to think that uh, the builds 
for portal and sequence are interswappable? I think. I'm honestly not sure. I, I'm I'm really not sure. I am. You know what I'm very sure about? I'm very sure that I'm very hopeful you had a fucking amazing weekend because you deserve it, dude. All right. Good evening, Alex and Good Jack. evening. Thank you so much, Rocket. I appreciate it, man. Hopefully you're having a good one today, too. I have a question for you guys. It's already been... So, no one's going to change... I guess you can't really change... I already purchased one, but... If you were to get, like, a, a winter coat, like, more of a dressy coat, maybe even think of those, like... I think they're called pea coats or, like, the trench coat style ones. For for guys in particular, or I guess... I guess it, Maybe anyone. Is it me or is it is it like navy blue? Like not a dark navy blue, but like a, a light blue is like the worst color for all the coats. I don't know why. I think tan's nice, like that beige brown style. I think dark brown's really nice. I think black, I, th I think someone changed my mind today. Black coats are definitely a little bit more contrasty. So I don't know if I'd go for a, a like a pure black coat. Um, charcoal coat or beige. I think a particular type of charcoal. I got a navy blue one though. It was really dark and I kind of like it though. But I think uh, it has to be like a dark navy. I think light gray is, is a no for me. Or not light gray, like then you know the middle point of gray? That like uh, in, in the middle sense of it's not that great. Um, this guy. <clears throat> Thank you, Davery. But that's, please, you're confusing me with someone else, I bet. Depends on skin tone. That's actually very true, too. I'm a bit more pale. So I find, like, the really contrasty colors don't look too great on me. And when I do get some sun, it just disappears in, like, a few months. Brush. I had one this morning. Oh, it's literally right here. Um, dude, my actual winter jacket, listen, my actual winter jacket, I purchased like, dude, I think when I was in high school and I have yet to swap it out. It is, uh, it has been my jacket forever. Wrong brush. It has been my jacket forever. It's just an old North Face jacket that I got at like a warehouse sale for like a hundred dollars. And that has been like my forever thing, dude. Vistafer, thank you so I much for the, the tier PK one. Seventy-five didn't have the knob or circle badge. I don't love circle badge vibe and I'm over knobs. <laughs> dude, I think a lot of people are over knobs at this point here. I I'm not gonna disagree with you. I think uh, seventy-five plus a knob is super cliche. So, I DM'd you about W one eighty. Yes, I saw that series. I've been out all day today. Hey, Alex, I love your content and follow you. you on all platforms. I wanted to ask how would you go about lubing Gator on Oil Kings? Trying to lube them for my daily driver. So Oil Kings, I would probably use GS2 or just 205G0. And um... Thank you so much for the compliments. Oh no I worries. I got some op blacks for my key cult. Just one or 265. That's coming so I can't wait to Hell build yeah, it. Hell yeah dude. I'm, I'm happy for your Beckett. You gotta post pictures in our Discord. But for um, for oil kings, I would lube them with just a bit of 205D0. I would ensure that your springs are well coated as well. And then um, they're very finicky, I find the oil kings. They do respond better to a little amount of lube. Again, because there's already oils and stuff on them. I would just not go overboard with adding on to it. Or you can just wipe off the current existing lube. Um, and then still go with a lighter coat, of course. But uh, the inconsistency of the oil or whatever it's on, the grease that's on it, right? At, like you know, when you buy them, the stock stuff is bad. IMO. I think I was like one of the only people to not like Oil Kings when they came out. I was like, oh, these are okay. Um, can you answer me a hypothetical question? Would it be hypothetical at that point there? I can try my best. Uh, Goose. 
Hi, quick question. I'm sorry, I'm very newbie at keywords. You never have to apologize that, ever. I saw a couple ads about brand Keychron. Is that a nice brand for beginners? They have some pretty good stuff. Um, I guess it's my, here's a, here's a question for you. Like, what are you looking for? Like, what's your goal right now when you start this hobby? But you never feel bad for asking questions. But yes, to answer, to answer your question, Keychron is good, but I would like to know what, what you're looking to do. Uh, the person who uploaded your VOD on YouTube is back. Did you finally talk to the person? I did, but I will not be revealing who they are. Essentially what happened is the other account got locked. Um, they tried to change a setting on their account and then YouTube just like flagged it from what I understand. I do lube with GS2, um, but more recently, like certain switches, again, it, this is all gonna be covered in my video. I do find different lubes respond, you know, differently to different switches, but. Experimentation is key to what you like. You can tailor things to your preferences, obviously. Uh, it was so early yesterday, but I'm late again. It's okay, Quacker. It is okay. No, it was never, Vase, it was never me. I told everyone in chat, I'm like, listen, I don't really care that anyone's doing this. I'm like, in fact, like, if they want to monetize it, go for it. Um, and then it got locked and then they got sad that it got locked and then we talked and I just actually, I have them managing, I made an account under my account. Like you can do sub or I guess like other YouTube channels under your main account. So I just said, here, be a manager of this. And if you want to continue uploading it and all that kind of stuff, go for it. If not, then no sweat off my back, but I really appreciate what they're doing. So. Keats, thank you so much for continuing a gifted sub. I appreciate you, dude. Um, would you recommend the Sonnet over the Thera and QK75? You know, something about the, the new Thera just felt very bland to me. So I'm just gonna tell you, I, I probably, I would say, yeah, I'd pick the Sonnet. The QK, let's finish today's build then maybe we can talk more about the QK75. But uh, overall three of those, I'd still pick a Sonnet just cause I prefer the premiumness of it. And I just kind of like the design of the Sonnet more. Um, okay, Goose says, I am a developer and I want to be more efficient and fast with my typing. Also moving uh, of my cursor. I, I want to feel comfortable. So that's a very personal choice. Um, I think if you're looking for speed, the obvious answer to this is, I don't think a mechanical keyboard is gonna help you with speed. But I think if you choose the right switches, it can help you with comfort, which therefore might help you with speed. Uh, I think you might want to go with a lighter switch. So maybe something sub 60 gram. In that case there, it doesn't really matter what keyboard you pick out, but I would probably pick a 75% if I was you, if you're coming from a full keyboard or even a TKL. No, I dropped my screwdriver. It's okay guys, nothing fell out this time. Fantastic. Um, but that's what I would pick. I would pick that. It was sitting on the edge of my desk and it just decided to whiffle off. Okay, I'm moving you here. That's what I would pick. I just wanted to say thanks for your help. I bought the parallel array because of you and I'm planning to build it with alu plate and KTC roses. Hell yeah, dude. If you read this, you're beautiful. Damn. Thank you. I appreciate that. 75% under $300. I mean, QK makes one, there's this one. There's a lot of choices you can get for under $300. No bend and snap. That's a Tim thing, I think. I'm gonna, I'm dubbing that the Tim move. Uh, love how vulnerable you were in that recent reel. Cheers to, dude, I actually was kind of scared to make that. I, at first I thought people would be like, oh, this is cringe and stuff like that. But I'm like, you know what, fuck it, dude. I think it's important to see uh, all sides of people. I want him to answer my question. Utams, did I miss your question? Hold on, I, I will try to get to it. There's a lot of questions. What O-ring should I use for the array? Okay, personal question, but I like firmer, harder O-rings. So that's my answer. It's always gonna be my answer. 
At one point, I think I thought I thought I liked uh, lighter O-rings because I thought they did something different to the board, but they don't in reality. I thought they made like it just more feel more squishy or like I don't know, it doesn't really do that. But I like it. Uh, I like it. God, I almost said I like it firmer. Okay, I like the O-ring to be firm. All right. I think that was just equally as bad. Um, with the budget around two to 20, uh, 200 to 225, should I get the QE75 or stay up for the mode? Let me follow along today with today's build. Let's see if we can answer that question for you. But I think it's hard to say right now. I like it firmer, Alex 2022. Bro, there's no way you guys can make that sus, please. Please. Also, can I just say, guys, Uniqlo is actually top tier. Uniqlo is everything that I wish H&M was at the time. And I think H&M was really good at one point for like maybe a good solid seven months. But it's just so good, dude. I fucking love Uniqlo. It's great. Uh, can I get, could, uh, could get an in-stock Aero 75? Are they in stock right now? Varja, what's going on, dude? How do you leave your KTT roses? Um, with GS2, that's it. A little bit of GS2. You can go a little heavier depending on the type of feel that you want, but you don't need to go that crazy with it. Honestly, you don't. If you want, you can, but do you have a mode keycap? I have them. I don't know if I'm allowed to show those, but uh, I will say that I was very impressed with the double shot, but um, I'll talk to mode. I was thoroughly inspecting, they didn't, they didn't send over like a whole set. They just sent over two, like two single keycaps. So it's not really much to show. Yes, you can show it. Oh, I will show it to you guys after this because it's on my other, it's on like a different table. I was taking pictures of them. Um, I will go grab it after this. Today, right now we're focusing on this, the, the, um, the switches from mode. What's up? What's up, Obscure? How are you doing? Hold your money and buy what you really want. Uh, very, very, very good sentiment as well. Um, one thing, but again, this doesn't apply to everything though. So again, take this with a grain of salt. I find that if you end up saving your money for the stuff that you want, opposing, opposed to buying things that like feed into making you feel better, it's usually a better purchase. So double shot keycaps, like for example, for legends, like die sub technically will eventually wear off, but um, a double shot won't because it's two pieces of plastic opposed to like a print on it. Uh, I'm pumped for their keycaps. Hope the mode keycaps um, are better than Monike keycaps. The space bar on my Monike set starts shining after three days. Interesting. Okay, I've actually, I, I've used the Monike keycaps and I actually sent Chozo a batch of Monike keycaps as well. Mine seem okay. Um, I'll, ask, I'll ask Chozo for his opinion because he'll probably use them more than I use them. I, I think I've used mine for like a cumulatively of like a month. Interesting. My main keyboard and switches? I don't know, man. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I don't think I've taken off I think it's been either this, the Sonnet, and the Suse as of recently. I don't think I've used anything else. I've just been enjoying the Unicorn with the Cherry Nixie switches so much, dude. Like, it's so nice. <sighs> Not all P-Kips have the same blend of PBT. That's true, too. I don't know the science behind that and I don't really want to get into that because that's like a topic I just don't know anything about. So you can see in some brands they put more ABS into their mist, just like Akko keycaps. Oh, interesting. Um, I can see the unicorn, I can see why the unicorns go it. It's pretty nice, man. How was your days though today, guys? What'd you guys do? How do you connect the battery? They didn't send me one. I have no idea. I'm assuming you take this off. There's a slot underneath this like piece of 
brass that's copper colored. Um, and then you stick it in there, but beats me. I have no idea how to install the battery. But you are wrong. What happened, Ancient? What am I wrong about? He said Zoom? He likes Zoom? Wait, what? What are we talking about, guys? I'm so confused. Uh, the gray desk mat? Oh, the other one that I had? Oh, he's arguing with me. Oh. The um, gray desk pad that I had was from Amazon. I don't really recommend it. Uh, it was just, I, I bought it thinking it would be really, really awesome to have that color. And it was just leaving marks. It's still not bad. It's also not very good for gliding your mouse on. So I don't truly recommend it. So it's from Amazon though, if you guys like it. Aesthetically, it's pretty, I'll tell you that much. I will indeed say that. Aesthetically, it is quite pretty. Wait, I just woke up from a nap and chat, this chat is confusing me. Yeah, I'm a, I was a little confused too, dude. Johnny, how are you doing though, man? Um, where would you send someone to get a good straight keyed cable? Dude, I feel like there's dispatch cables. Um, we have a From Scratch USA, who's one of our sponsors too. They do some cables. Um, I'm gonna be honest, man. A lot of the cable shops I used to shop with like don't make a whole lot of cables anymore, but I'd say I, I trust those ones. Um, so either from scratch or dispatch. Uh, and then for other ones, yeah, I mean like, Reagan doesn't really make a whole lot of cables these days. <laughs> so I don't really know. I want to recommend Reagan, but Reagan be doing his own thing. Some different things now. Rich cables I have not heard of. What are rich cables? I had someone actually ask me about artisan keycaps recently and man, I am so out of the loop with artisan keycaps, dude. I have no idea when it comes to um, artisan keycaps anymore. I know a few and I, I have a few that I still like really like and I recently just bought one for like my girlfriend and stuff, but that's about it. I got an F1, 8X, R2 and F2. Should I sell all the F1 and I mean, did you build the F1 yet? Should I sell the F1 and wait for the F1 V2? I, I don't know the answer to this because I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with the F1 8X. And I don't know what you're gonna be getting extra of, out of having an F1 V2 or an F1 722 other, other than like liking the looks. So I, I don't know the right answer to tell you there. Is there any way to see what Alex's ma uh, main daily driver keyboard is? I mean, I can just tell you guys, like, uh, it depends on what I'm doing, you know? Like it really does. If I'm doing a lot of photo work, goodbye 60%. Like, I'm, it's getting off my desk. I'm not using a 60% when I'm doing like editing and stuff like that. I have all the binds like, on a different layer, all that kind of stuff, but I'm, it's by, goodbye. I'm using either a 75 or higher. Um, if I'm doing gaming, I will not use anything other than a 60. There's no point. And then um, if I'm just browsing the web, just whatever I feel like it, but typically 60 or 65. Dell low profile? Hell no, dude, I'm using that Logitech Romer G switchboard, my guy. That's it. That's the only keyboard for me. Apple Magic Keyboard Gang. I haven't used one in a long time, but I like the I like the Apple laptop, so. I do enjoy the Apple laptop. I know people think it's cringe, but I think it's kind of awesome. Dude, I still remember my experience with the Romer G switches. I, I bought the Logitech keyboard when I was younger. That was my first exposure, I think, to... Is it considered a mechanical switch, the Romer G switch? I don't know, I have to like look it up again. Is it considered one, guys? It, it is, right? It is technically a mechanical switch, right? It's not like some weird hybrid of something else. They call it mechanical? I tried it, right? I remember I bought the keyboard. 
it just, it seems so hype to me at the time. And I remember typing on it. And again, I had not been exposed to much mechanical keyboards at the time. Like it's just when these things came out and they were so squishy, like they were just so like not good. And every part of my body was like, bro, return this. But I think I was also caught up in like a, I had just convinced myself to buy this. And dude, this is the dangerous part about buying shit, dude. I just convinced myself, I'm like, yo, this is like supposed to be a good keyboard. Let me do, um, let me just like try and love this. Fucking, I hated it, dude. I think within a, I went over the return period, within like 45 days, I bought a new keyboard. And I just, I hated it, man. It was so bad. I know I've heard some people really like, yeah, some can call. Like I just, I convinced myself like, this is a good keyboard. Thank you guys again for the follows. I appreciate it guys. Did I mess this up? I did. What do you use to shave your neck? Like over here? Um, so I just, I use a trimmer. I don't actually shave down to like the skin. I just trim and then on, I have like a, an adjustable one. I remember I got it on Black Friday last, last uh, two years ago. And then um, I just set that down to 0.5 or sometimes I set that down to like what they have as a zero, but it doesn't get, again, it doesn't like close shave. Um, that's what I usually use. I'm not gonna lie, dude. Shaving my neck is, uh, it's annoying because sometimes like, I don't know, I'm not good at like lining things up that way, so. I don't know. Logitech Roamer G Switch, $2. You know, I'd probably buy one now just to see if I can uh, make it sound good. I doubt it though. I uh, haven't put them in yet, but they had a nice sound profile. Like I was telling Obscure as I was lubing them. I'm like, these are actually like pretty nice. <laughs> Keep Matt is from Keep Matt. Although mine's upside down. All right, this is done. These should all work. Perfect. We're gonna use the mid plate foam because we haven't tried this yet. Compliment for Pander. You know what always works, Pander, that I never have to test? You, man. I know you're just always trying your best every single day. Love you, dude. I hope everything keeps going the way you want it to go and I hope you accomplish all your dreams this week, man. Maxi, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Good evening, dude. Mr. Otos. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Uh, I need to cut this. Because I don't know why they do this for. They make you cut this off, and then you got to, like, trim this again, too. Good evening, Maxi. How are you doing? Thank you for 19 months of being here, dude. That's done. When the video about the toe, uh, oh, guys, so I tried. Uh, I cannot get the um, O-ring to work properly uh, while using those stabs. So just as like a little point of reference for you guys, I could get it, I could get it like in and it kind of worked, but I did, I did not feel comfortable with it. And I personally would not ship the keyboard out to the client like that. I like, I mean, I've always liked SA keycaps. Is this plate funky for this? All right. Um. Are you gonna be taking a look at the TG67? I've already looked at it twice, I think now, comma, or comma. I've looked at it for um, Kinetic Labs and I've looked at it prior in the past too. So I've done it a few times already. Alpine 65, which one's that one there? All right, let's try these switches out. Where the fuck did I put them? Oh, they're right there. Uh, I DM'd you again um, about the KTT box switches I have. Oh yeah, dude, I need... let me look at your DM after this. Fucking, I love KTT switches. They're so good. Joining in for the positive vibes? Vertigo, what's going on, dude? <sighs> Sounds good, man. I'll, I'll respond back to you. I don't know if I'm gonna do any responses tonight to anyone, just cause like, I'm low-key kinda tired, but 
Uh, so here are the switches. All black, so nothing too fancy in terms of colors here. I actually like the way that their tactile switches are, are done with like the multicolored stems. But pretty nice. Here is the sound lubed with some 205G0. No films necessary. I did notice they probably could be filmed. Um, there was a slight bit of a housing wobble, like the slightest. But... So, not too bad sounding. As another note, only two of the switches or three of the switches were like this, and I, I can chalk it up to maybe something like was shifted around as I opened the switches. It can happen. Um, but some of the stems, I took a deeper look at it. Some of the, uh, sorry, the contact um, leaf over there, it was just like moved a little bit. So I found like either you can fix it by just pressing down it a little bit or um, lubing behind it. So that completely fixed it. But just as a point of note, all right, let's install these things. Uh, these are long poles, yes. Hope this plate is okay with this. This seems a little tight for the plate. <clears throat> Sounds like a switch? Yeah. I'm new here, but I'm enjoying that your streams and love the vibe. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that, man. I might actually have some issues with this FR4 plate that they sent. Seems like it's just too tight. All right. We'll get it working. <laughs> What's the difference between long pull switches and regular switches? So the stem inside, is longer and makes quicker contact with the bottom of the uh, switch housing, which results in like a different actuation, plus it results in like a louder, more clackier sound profile, if you will. God, I really don't like this little piece of foam here. Well, that's uh, pretty much just how you can sum that up. One is better endowed. Come on, my guy. How do they look with factory lube? These guys? So these semi unlubed ones, just as a little point of note as well. I did not receive lubed ones. I don't know if they're gonna be, I don't, Obscure, are you still there? Are you guys gonna be selling unlubed versions of these too? I have no idea if they are. God, this is another reason why I hate flex cuts and plates and stuff, man. Like, don't get me wrong, the idea behind flex cuts, cool. But my lord, does it make installing things so annoying. Um, better or for worse, some factor, um, so some of the better factory loop switches. <clears throat> yeah, there's a few factory loop switches that are really, really good, for sure. I will admit that. We legit sent seven kilos of 205G0 to the factory for them to use. Damn, you guys had to send that yourselves? Interesting. Guys, I'm like low key thinking maybe we just do hot swap platelets here. <laughs> or, you know what I might do guys? I'm, I wanna use the plate fork for this because the plate is really tight. Um, for the QK. I even noticed it while putting on the stabs. Um, I might just take out the mid plate foam here and just use the plate fork because it's also bending. I can see it bending over here as I put it down because it has all these fucking flex cuts everywhere. By the way, guys, I, I complain a lot about flex cuts because I think they're, I honestly think that like, they're kind of pointless. You're never really like flexing, like this is never flexing like that. So, I don't know, man. I'm not a big fan of flex cuts. They just make installation difficult with different switches. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna do that.
Flex sets are meme. Yeah, they're annoying too. I really hate using them. All right, no mid plate foam, guys. I'm gonna use a plate fork and install these. Mounting system is more important. Yep, completely. I 100% I agree with that sentiment. And again, I will use, I mean, we'll use Owl Labs as an example because they tend to use a lot of flex cuts. The Link 65 was a great example of, yes, flex cuts seem cool, but they ultimately like don't add much to your keyboard. And they just make installation tough. Even, uh, dude, even those plates that I've been seeing a lot of people use, like, for example, dude, those plates that are just like fucking wire frames, so difficult to actually use, man, and install things on them. The new thing to hate, I would love them if they like, were utilized in a fashion where they add some relief. For example, a singular flex cut isn't a bad thing to have, I don't think. This is a lot easier now. But when they're becoming obstructive and like even installing your switches, yeah, I just kind of hate them after that, you know? Uh, what about the Corsa plate? Again, I feel the same way. It almost kind of feels pointless. And it almost makes you have to use this. I guess I just don't understand it, you know? If you, I think if you wanted to design a lighter weight plate, then probably just use a different material, opposed to add, adding like all these different cuts in your plate to just make it insanely difficult to install switches. Or like megapixels on camera, you can have a bad sensor with high megapixel count. Yeah, kinda. Be careful with the backspace. Wait, why? Why be careful with the backspace? Is it knocking off the hot swap socket? Looks okay, you can see it. I see where it could possibly hit contact with the, with the hot swap socket. Possibly, but it looks like we're okay. Or else you push out a split uh, space pen. I, I think we're okay, guys. I can definitely see what you guys are talking about though. <laughs> uh, thoughts on the new High Ground Summit 65? I'm interested in looking at it. I, again, I don't think that that keyboard has um, has to be for an enthusiast crowd. I think it could just be them trying to do something for whatever crowd they're in. Like the, are they considered like esports? Can I send you a package of snow? Where's the snow coming from? I've heard, I've heard New, did was New York that got hit pretty hard, or parts of New York got hit pretty hard? Depends on where the snow's coming from. I'm low key okay. Like you don't have to send me snow. I think uh, I think I'm good. I don't mind snow, but I prefer snow to naturally fall. I don't need to be sent some. You know, I got snow here. Yeah, <laughs> it's limited edition yellow snow. Well, well, in that case, yeah, that might be pretty good. Buffalo got 70 inches. Damn, that's pretty fucking wild, dude. Hello, Ray Fox. How are you doing? Also, just as a little note, because I don't think me complaining about flex cuts is gonna is gonna change anything, bro. Let me tell you guys about a little tool that I use: plate fork. This little guy right over here, absolutely insane tool. Just so everyone knows, I'm not affiliated with the, the flex the, the flex cut the uh, plate fork at all. I don't, have, I don't think any of the vendors I affiliate with myself with even carry one. They're fucking awesome though. Get yourself a plate fork. They will help you with your keyboard building and journey. End of story. 
That's all I have to say. I bought mine from, um, uh, if you type in exclamation point, what's it, plate fork or exclamation point fork? But I got mine from Fang Studio. Yeah, someone did, Cancerous just did. Honestly, I think your opinion might change things. Won't be surprised if we stop seeing them now. I mean, again, I don't mind a singular flex cut or two at the very most, but I think like even this doesn't make sense. Like I was showing you guys in the other build that we did with no foam. It doesn't do anything vertically. Like it's, it's no different than anything else. And I feel like it just does the same thing to every single keyboard that has large amounts of flex cuts, which is just thin out the sound profile. And if you're sticking, if the idea is you're sticking a lot of foam in, then like why even have flex cuts? They're not gonna do anything. Your whole keyboard's gonna be surrounded in foam. Not a bad thing, but it just feels like they're not really there for anything. They're actually taking away from the keyboard experience. What do you think the best sounding mid high end O ring board is? Ooh. Mid high end, probably sequence. The Bakken Echo is not too bad either. Yes, I think the mounting system, like someone said earlier, should be the point of what needs to be changed or looked into, etc. <laughs> Am I joining the unicorn? No, I will not be joining the unicorn simply because I do not want to start hoarding keyboards just because I think it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite keyword at the moment. I am not like that. And I will not take away someone else's opportunity to get the keyword. Just cause I want one. I'm blessed I already have one and I do not need to. Uh, what about boards with all foam uh, between the plate and PCB? How would you install switches easily there? If they are still like, dude, if they're being really difficult to install, even with all the foam, because usually when you add foam, it should eliminate some of the difficulty. If they are still being difficult, uh, I don't really have a great way to install them other than just like, be careful as you install them. But yeah, it's tough when you have foam and they're still doing that. Do you like knobs on keyboards? Yes and no. I, I guess I just don't use a knob on a keyboard anymore. Even though I don't even have a, like I took away my DAC amp system, but like, I can't break the habit of just going to like the volume bar and scrolling down on it. I, I can't because I want everything else to say this, stay the same volume. I just want to lower one application sometimes. Even with like Netflix, I'm not going to like, scroll my bar down. I just want Netflix to be lower, you know? Are the green and silver uh, unicorns yours? Um, the light blue one is mine and the green one is mine as well. Most unique slash special keyboard you've made? Um, I mean, realistically, I, I'm gonna be kind of sappy here. I think the most special keyboard I ever did was my original Tofu. And I say that because I got to work with my dad on building that because I had never used a soldering iron and he had one. It was a really bad soldering iron. <laughs> it was one of those irons that like took forever to heat up. They had a really, really, really thick like chisel tip on the end of it too. Uh, we used really thick solder and we were both trying really hard to get, get the switches to work, but everything was just the wrong thing to use for building a keyboard. We still got it. It was the messiest solder job ever, even though my dad's like pretty good at soldering. It just, we didn't have the right tools. Um, and then I also really wanted to try and I was nervous as all hell soldering. But I think that was probably the most special, even though I do not use that keyboard, like at all. That has to be probably the most um, special board, I'd say. What about you guys? I was just desoldering. Um, I was just soldering a stab testing PCB today and it made me miss soldering. Something, there's something special about soldering. So this is exactly why I fucking hate flex cuts, dude. See this right here, guys? See what's happening as I try to push this in? See how this whole piece is flexing down? Do you guys, do you guys see that? Making it extremely difficult to install this switch. Oh, 
Ambulance, how you doing, dude? Yeah, I have to use the fork here. There we go. Yeah, we have to go in from the side. Now this one here, actually we'll still leave this here and we'll install like that. Well, they don't call it flex cuts for nothing. Well, after everything's said and done, I can guarantee you, it takes an incredible amount of force to get this to flex with the FR4 plate, even though both the FR4 and the PCB have that. It takes a pretty incredible amount of force. I would love to see the science behind, like, if these flex cuts actually contribute to a softer typing experience. Or is it really the ga like the gasketing and mounting style that does? The flame keyboard? I do. It's actually one of the keyboards I used to shoot um, photography on a lot because it's just very pretty. A flexi keyboard, get a po yeah, I agree. Different plate material versus anything else. Cancels out the use of the flex cuts. I agree with that completely. I'm on the same wave wavelength as you. Posture check, got you. <sighs> Favorite stabs. Favorite stabilizers. Um, I mean, I still really like just using any stabs I can get my hands on, but co most cost effective, best stab you can get your hands on. Dude, there is nothing wrong with using some nice cherry clippings and the reason why i think cherry clippings are still the most goaded stab ever they're super cheap listen they're super cheap all right they work with everything all right and then if you're building like an old you don't have to be like ah oh, shit i got screw ins i'm screwed now i can't actually build my key no they just work with everything dude sure they take a little bit more to mod you gotta clip some stuff boohoo but for what how much are cherry clippings versus everything else the one third, one fourth of the price? Amazing, amazing stabilizers. <laughs> or you can get something else, like sure you can get a, a screw in, they're still very easy to install, but. Amazing stabs. Quick audio question, how do I find out what, uh, wait, wait, sorry. How do I find out what mic works with my voice? Um, oh, I have a different opinion on this. I think you should probably get what mic is better for your environment and then worry about the tonality of your voice afterwards. If you get yourself a good audio interface, um, that can help solve some of that issue. But I really feel that like you should worry about getting a mic for your environment before you worry about getting a pretty sounding voice. Any microphone should capture your voice accurately. There are some that are definitely warmer. And if you're looking for like a warmer tone, get a Shure SM7B. Those things there, they make everything sound warm. That's why I don't like them. Um, or you can opt to spend a lot of money and buy yourself a tube mic. Something with a, a tube on it. Those tend to make everything a little bit more ooey gooey warm as well. What aperture am I using? On my camera? Which one? God damn, dude, this fucking switch. All right, I'm just gonna push everything in here. Sorry, guys. All right, a few more switches, guys. My fingers hurt after this. I thought this was gonna be an easy build time, man. I said my fingers are all stressed out. Uh, for the face cam, I'm using, uh, I think it's on 2.8 right now. How do I fix the audio in my room? Hmm. Okay, well, there could be a million different things to this. Does it sound, so Goon, does it sound like hollow in your room? Like, is there a lot of like, when you talk, do you hear yourself like bouncing things off the wall? Because most likely there's two things. Actually, first answer that question. Then I, I'm going to try guessing two things when it comes down to what's causing that in your room. 
Time to get like Goku and do fingertip push-ups. I can't even do regular push-ups, my guy. Uh, these are the new mode switches that we're using. If you guys type in exclamation point build, I mean, at least I'll tell you the name. I don't got a link to anything. I don't think mode has a link to anything, but um, is the January close sounding to the sequence? I think the January is a little bit better. It doesn't have like those hollow empty spots, but uh, like a poppy keyboard has no pop. Uh, okay, two things. It could be your desk. You could have like a really, really cheap, unfortunately like thin desk that's causing that. Or it could just be your room's not sound treated and you're just hearing a lot of like emptiness, which is causing things to sound thin or boring. Um, Goon, does the room that it sounds bad and have a carpet? One of the best things you can do for yourself if it doesn't have a carpet is buy a carpet. Carpets help a lot with removing some of the inflections of like everything else. QK75, um, I think it's what, five screws? Maybe five? Stack five towels, could stack towels as well. All right. I stacked three desk uh, pads and got tennis elbow. Dude, I actually thought stacking desk pads really helped if you already have a good like sounding desk, I guess, but it does not help. It only helps if you have a really crappy desk. I honestly, okay, this is the only thing I will say that I really dislike about the QK is the fucking inclusion of a ribbon cable. After all these years of building keyboards, I still hate ribbon cables so, so much. I like what they did though with the uh, knob, it being separate, that makes everything a little bit more easy to install. So kudos to that. All right, let's start putting this together. Um, ribbon cables bring back vintage connectivity. is closing nicely. What is going on here? Is it the screws causing some weird contact? Hello? Did I put a switch somewhere I wasn't supposed to? Do you possibly have an ETA on the room tour? Um, soonish. I don't exactly know when. I don't have like a, a set date for you guys, unfortunately. But when I get to it, I'll get to it. 
By by end of year at the very least. It's the hole with the knob? Is it? No, the knob should I took it off fine with the knob on. Just something blocking it. Uh it's the knob, the first production have a, a hole cut out too small. How did it take it off? Hold on, let me let me unscrew it then. Uh, Alright, we'll see. We'll see if it is. Uh, putting two cases together. Compliment for burbs? Burbs. I'm not gonna lie, you make me act up on the daily. And if I could, dude. Same thing, guys. If I could, I would stop everything I'm doing to play some video games with you right now. And then play some other games if you know what I mean. What the hell is causing this to not close? Sorry, Bribs, I'm a little distracted, my friend. Something is... I don't think it's the screws. I could just take them out for the time being. Could be the screws. What I think it is, is I think it's actually the um, plate. I think the plate's a little bit oddly sized. I can see it impacting the plate. Uh, seem different so far? Not really a good look for this right now. Is Burbs being sussy? I think it's literally the plate, guys. The plate seems like it's just too big. Okay, we're gonna do this really quick. Oh no, yeah, very much, oh no. Yeah, look at this. Plate is a little bit too big. So it's not slotting in nicely. That is wild. Hmm. How can we combat this right now? Time to get the Dremel. I don't got a Dremel. Oh, you know what I see it is too? We didn't have this problem with the other switch. Although that's not the problem here though. I don't know what the hell is going on here. Well, God, that made me nervous doing this. It is now effectively a top mount. <laughs> I don't know if this will sound good like this. It's pretty tight against the case. Okay, well, the aluminum plate seemed fine. This FR4 plate seems a little bit tight against the case. Hmm. What did you do? I just pressed it really hard inside, dude. It is now effectively a top mount. This is a top mount QK75. God, dude, that made me nervous doing that. Brute force mounting. How much is the board? Uh, how much was this again, guys? It starts at 135, I believe, and goes up to 200. Am I correct on that? I guess we will find out if this sounds good indeed. Okay, we're gonna see. But did the flex cuts help force it in? No, I don't. The flex cuts did not help it at all. The FR4 plate. I noticed this when I was putting it on because it was like tight against the stabs as well. But I think there just might be some sort of cutting problem with this FR4 plate. Maybe it was just like a mil like a point something millimeters too big on every direction. It's an odd uh, design choice. If there's a, there's a reason they went daughter board, not a solid PCB. Actually, it's a pretty good reason. Design wise, if you have a rotary encoder there and put it on the PCB, this part of your PCB is like when you press down on the, the encoder, you are going to be 
bending this part of the PCB, which could lead to like rubbing of the PCB on the case. Uh, it could lead to like a weird bottom out issue. So having it on a daughter board and screwing it into the case is actually the smarter way to do it. So that I actually kind of like, but having it there as a no, like you having no option there for it. Some people might not like the rotary encoder. All right, let's put this back on. I wonder if we're gonna have some alignment issues now with our keycaps. We'll see. So there's no foam in this thing, by the way, guys. Absolutely none. So we're gonna see how this sounds here in a sh short second. The macro pad I'm using is called the Treasure Type 9. All right. Oh, I do need to go grab Taro though, because we are using a 6.25 bottom row now. Anytime, Graffiti. I just appreciate you guys all stopping by today. I think I already like this a little bit more than the last one, but why don't more entry boards use top mount? Because top mount's hard to, I guess the, at least my perspective, top mount is kind of difficult to make good. You can have some pretty meh top mounts, but uh, top mount's difficult to be like good. And especially with plasticky boards, you'll end up with a plasticky sound. Did you play any video games yesterday? No, I actually did. Did I? I don't think I did. I think I wanted to, but we were trying to get TFT to work and it did not work. Wait, did I play games? I don't remember if I did. So top mounts can sound really uh, boring in some cases. And by some cases, I mean like literal cases, like in plastic cases, they can sound pretty meh. Um, and I have seen some other keyboards with top mounts just be, again, very meh. Have you seen the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet bugs? Uh, you know what? I have now. You guys informed me about it and I went to go look. And I'm very glad I did not purchase that game on the real. I am super glad I did not get that game. Were you able to get some of Bad Seeds tactile switches? You know what, dude? I should have asked him in person if I, he had like an extra batch that I could steal from him. But uh, no, I did not. They sold out too quick. Are the Obscura switches tactile? No, these ones, I don't, hold on. Let me go double check what Mode sent me for these ones here. Hold on one second. Cause I know Mode sent me all the specs for these. I just don't remember. One sec guys, I, I literally have it right here. The tactile ones are called, ba, ba, ba. I believe they're called Tomorrow? Tomorrow tactiles, yeah. And then the linear ones are called Obscura and then the quiet ones being the silent ones are, and dude, I'm gonna mispronounce this so, so badly. Anthracite, is it pronounced anthracite? Anthracite, I think that's the way you say it. So what I did notice about these switches, uh, I believe they're full nylon. So they obviously have a bit of a deeper sound signature. Any full nylon switch typically does, which I, again, I think a lot of people vibe with. So they are a little bit more of a deeper long pull switch, kind of in the same realm as Epsilon's, hopefully with the non Epsilon problems of the, le the loose leaf or whatever the problem was with those. Taro is a great choice for this keyboard, actually. By the way, we are not using any foam for this build. No foam. Ooh, my stomach is growling at me. I had a pretty big dinner, too. Hydrate, got you. Can't stand deep switches now. Blue bonnets for the win. Blue bonnets are pretty nice, man. 
Zoom TKL versus Tiger 80. Um, Zoom TKL. But I mean, like, if you're going for straight value, dude, just go for, just go for the, the Tiger. Tiger 80 Lite. That's the most biggest value you can get. Evan and Caitlin, oh my God, I need to stop following keyboard channels. We're gonna end up buying too many. All of us here have that problem. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone here has that problem. So this is also, it's not just a keyboard channel, it's a support group. So yeah, welcome to the support group. We're here to help. You buy more keyboards, that is. Um, definitely uh, have that problem. Yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> it's pretty bad, man. We're here to help you buy keyboards. Wait, wrong button again. Support uh, my bad decision group, pretty much. We get therapy here, yeah, sort of. Too many switches, too little boards. Dude, I almost, I was running out of switches there for a little bit. Support group helping Alex with that dump truck. Huh? How did we end up here? Sacker, where did we come from with this? <laughs> huh? My name is Ambulance and I'm a keyboard addict. There it is. Uh, Alex, what do you think of the QK75 so far compared to past QK boards? I still think the 60 was my favorite. I don't know if this one here lives up to my how much I like the 60. How is your life, Alex? Waltz! Anyway, have you watched Mark Chun channel? His editing is my favorite second to Alex Mark Alex Mark Chun has a channel? Hold on a second. I didn't know he had a channel. Dude, Mark Chun's photography is fucking fantastic. Waltz, I'm doing great, by the way. I'm watching like two seconds of the video. I'm already in love. I don't like his font color choice though. The green's a little bit hard to read on the white, but. Oh, he's so talented, man. He is so, I'm subscribing to this right away. He is so, so talented. If you guys don't know who Marker Chun is, great keyboard photographer. Stomp, thank you so much for the prime, and I appreciate the four months, dude. But someone who actually really inspires me too. Oh, I, I go on his website all the time, Kron. It's It's so good. No, that does not go there. Sexy 1440p, hi I Phantom. How are you doing? Markachan and his Theka setups are fire. His photos are just so good. You guys didn't tell me yeah, this is in the wrong spot. His website's way better, maybe the best. He is super talented at what he does. Super, super talented. In fact, Evan and Caitlin, thank you so much for the five tier ones. I really appreciate you. Thank you very, very much. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, it's Saturday, right? I hope you guys are having a, a really, really great Saturday leading into an even better Sunday. I love his compositions and use of props. Yes. He is so inspiring. I, I will tell you guys that over and over again, but so, so inspiring. Um, it's just incredible, man. Thank you again, Evan and Caitlin. I appreciate you. Why do I, what was I doing on the side row over here? Do you guys remember? Oh yeah, I think I know what I was doing. This should go here. So many inspirational photographers. Yeah, dude, there's a lot of really inspirational people in this hobby. You know, even Evan and Caitlin, even if you don't get into this for like all the keyboards, um, I think the people inside the keyboard community are some of the most welcoming people inside of keyboards in general. Um, really, really great community to be in too. Yes, if you guys have not seen Marker Chen's content, 1000%, man. I would, like, listen, I would dare to say, at least in my opinion, he's probably the best person doing photography for keyboards right now, like, bar none. I don't know someone who's doing something as good as he is. His lighting is insane, his prop usage is insane, like, I can tell there's a lot of, like, feeling that goes behind all of his photos. Um, even the more simplistic ones, like, I just love them, so, like I said, probably the best person doing photos for keyboards right now. Let me get the rest of this keycaps out. Oh. All right, that's over here. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
especially Alex's community. Oh, you guys are too kind. Too, too kind. Thank you guys for the subs. I really do appreciate it, guys. It means a lot. Incredible, I'm blown away. Yeah. How do you like those earplugs? I'm not a fan of earbuds um, in my ears. So IEMs are a little bit more of a different beast than uh, earb earbuds. Hmm. I prefer IEMs to earbuds. Uh, now to find all the right parts for the speaker. Don't get me wrong, I love your photos too. Hey, listen, I am not afraid to admit, man, that like, their stuff's insane. Were you inspired too, considering doing a keyboard stream um, build by, uh, but a bit intimidated, especially around the lubing? If you ever need help with anything, just reach out. Um, I can literally give you guys some great pointers or set you guys in the right direction for that kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun. Does this use? Oh yeah, it does. All right, this uses like this. Thank Waffle. Thank you, Hype Waffles. Train. Thank Love you, dude. You, Alex Fox P. Where's my last keycap here? God, that sound, that song was pretty hype. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for the hype train. Thank you guys so, so much. I mean, I don't think the Zoom, does the Zoom have PE from? I don't remember. Oh, I think I think I have Marker Chun's song still up. Hold on one sec. Do I? I do. Well, let's put back on my music. Have you tried tofu types? Tofu switches that are full nylon. Full nylon tofu types. I've tried a lot of full nylon switches. Hold on, I want to tune up this stabilizer ever so slightly, so just give me a few minutes. Or you can do the smoothest switches ever having your loop services. Alpha, do you still think they're the smoothest ever after using them? syringe with the blue, here it is, the blue header on it. Uh, have you heard about the Lego keyboard? I have, but it's not an actual Lego keyboard, right? It's not official Lego. It's just building block stuff, right? I don't mean to take away from what it is, but I also think that people are calling it a Lego keyboard and I don't think it's official Lego from what I understand. All right, I think this already sounds a crap ton better than the quieter switches that we used. All right. Discrepancy with this keyboard, however, I will say this. The plate was being weird. This is a, this is a prototype, mind you. Um, but still, not to take away from what it is, the plate was definitely playing weird with the top case of this and it pressed really tight into the top frame. Um, I don't know if that will affect the overall sound signature of this to any sort of degree, but just keep that in mind um, as we type on this. I can already tell you the alphas. I do like these switches already. Even though it's an FR4 plate. You, the flex? It's, look at the uniform flex with this. See how uniform that is? <laughs> so does it really matter that we have, um, does it really matter that we have flex cuts? All right, let's see what this sounds like. Oh, 
okay, I actually... I really like the enter. Okay, the switches feel great. I think I, I even really like the uh, springs inside these. Very consistent as well. Um, I think the next thing I wanna try with this keyboard, not today and I don't know if I'll do this on stream or not, I might do a write up for this. The left shift, I actually quite like the left shift. Um, I wanna try a playlist, I don't think that's a today thing, but we did use no foam again, and I still really like this with no foam, so I can only imagine this is gonna help alter this. Uh, but yeah, the obscure linear switches inside this, I think really helped bring the board to life as well, because I didn't really care for it with the other switches that we had. Um, so I think it's a mix of the board being pretty solid, and then also the obscure linear switches doing a pretty good job on this too. Uh, how are the obscures? They have a deeper, you guys can kind of tell, they're a little bit more of a deeper, sounding long pull switch, I'd say on the same level as the Epsilons. Um, these are GMK Taro. Yeah, we're using the FR4 plate for this. The Zoom TKL, we could try a uh, rebuild of that soon. I don't know when we're gonna do it, but we can definitely. Tree, Thanks thank you so Saturday much, man. Night. Hey, no worries, man. I wasn't planned, but I hope you guys like it. Uh, rebuild playlist another day? We could, maybe if we have another day, maybe we could. Um, do I have specs on the, did someone say I have specs on the switches? I have a spec sheet. I think Mode shared it on their Discord or something. I would join the Mode Discord. Unicorn sound sample. All right, all right, I'll, I'll show you guys the unicorns, please. I like the, the, the unicorn, it's really, really nice. It's pretty nice, man. This has so much character to the keyboard, you know? Uh, where's the green one? Somewhere around here. Solder you guys want a soldering tutorial? No one's told me that. Um, I can maybe do one. Um, wish me luck for the draw. Good luck, everybody. Good luck on your unicorn draw. Overall though, I think I'm still pleased with the QK75. I do think this is, listen, I'm gonna be honest, I, I like I like it, but I still think the QK60 was a way better rendition of uh, the stuff they've been doing with uh, the QKs. I think this might be my least favorite QK build. I just, I like what they did with the 65. I liked the 60 a lot. I think the 60 was definitely their strongest, but I think this is their weakest. Chazal, thank you so much for the tier one. I really appreciate you. I hope you're having a great and amazing day. Thank you, thank you. Um, mode keycaps time? Oh yeah, let me go grab those. Give me like one second, I'll grab the keycaps. I have to also remember where I put them because I think they're on my, oh, they're not there. One second. Okay, let's see these. Wrong button. All right, this is not, this is gonna be changed from what I understand because this is like too low. So they did tell me I think this is changing, um, but this is double shot as you guys can see. And you guys can pretty, pretty see, it's like pretty nice even legend. No real, uh, 
Is that a pick of Tim? It is a pick of Tim. No weird like thinness or like one letter is like off centered or something. And then the, I only have two keycaps. The A is pretty solid too for being double shot. Cause sometimes again, you get weird thinness and it's just something that's just standard across the board. But from again, from what I understand, this is being changed position wise. Who's the guy on the wall? That's Tim Keyless. He's a streamer. Um, we have pictures of each other on our wall. <laughs> New molds completely from scratch, huge undertaking. That's a, yes, it is very, also very expensive. <laughs> uh, will the final kit contain more than two keycaps? I hope so. Um, I really hope so. Uh, what's the best QK board? I think the QK60. Just command an A. Yeah, that's all you get, guys. <laughs> you guys use more than two, those two keys? Huh? Uh, if you only keep three of your keyboards, which would you keep? Oh, man. Unicorn, Sonnet, and I think right now, either the Shelby or the Salvation. Unicorn, let's just say Unicorn, Sonnet, and Shelby. I just like the way it assembled. I like the way it built. It was just overall, I think a really good keyboard. Um, sounded great too. So I just, I think it just flowed so nicely from like building to end experience. So you forego the, forego, forego the, the moon tower. Dude, there's so many good 60% I have. There are so many good ones. I still love my moon tower. So many, dude, 60s are one of my favorite layouts, by the way. Have you tried the Thera V2? I have, it was okay, like it was nothing, nothing crazy. I'm not gonna like lie to you guys and be like, yes, the Thera is the next big keyboard, but it was okay. Like if you enjoyed the original Thera, you'll probably enjoy that. I don't like the styling changes personally, and I don't really care for like that weird steering wheel, uh, ship steering wheel artisan knob that they included. Uh, moon tower giveaway. Guys, I'm not giving away the moon tower. Not again. I already gave one away. Um, no more. No more, guys. Please, let me keep one. Do you have any recommendations for a silent tactile with low spring force? Ooh. Let me look into that a little bit for you. Um, silent tactile with low... I mean, you can just swap the springs at yourself. But my favorite silent tactiles, I think... The tacit switches are pretty good. I like those. Um, but I, I would probably say, yeah, I'd probably just switch out the springs yourself. Bobas are pretty good too, yeah. Silent, like the bobas. Yeah, you could do a uh, boba silence as well. But I don't know, how are the springs in those? They're not low, like low, uh, low force, are they? No, they're like a uh, pretty normal, I'd say. Again, you might want to buy springs. You might want to do like a little spring swap. I recommend it anyways. I don't think Bobas are light, no. Can you compare the Sonnet and the QK? I did that the other day, didn't I? Oh no, I think I compared something. The Sonnet is gonna sound way different though. Like I don't really wanna compare it for you guys because the Sonnet, the one that I built recently, the one that's like fully assembled is completely foamed up. It sounds awesome, I like it, but we're comparing something with foam versus not comparing like it just, it's not really a great comparison. Um, so I, it's really hard for me to say like, yes, this sounds better because they're two very different keyboards right now. Uh, are, are they 55 gram? I don't remember, honestly. Yeah, so changing springs, uh, Evan and Caitlin, is one of the best things you can do for your, your switches. A lot of stock switches come with some pretty questionable springs. And I think that finding a nice spring that you like can really change your experience with the switch. So, is it 55 to 67? I always thought they were like the 65 range. Oh, shows how much I know, but I don't really use silent switches all that often. Uh, and I prefer the silent linears myself. But yeah, finding that range is really, really important. Okay though guys, today was just a little short stream. I know we're not streaming our normal like two, two and a half hours. 
Um, somehow we, I thought I was on the stream for like an hour today, but somehow we still stretched it out to an hour and 40 minutes. How do you say it's a, okay. If you want the definition of what's a trash spring, open some older cherry switches up and then uh, look at the spring and try those springs out. Swap them with the exact same like force of spring in a, in a like TX spring or just a better spring. You'll notice a difference right away. But try cherry springs, they're, they're awful. I didn't mind the one in the Nixies. I probably still wanna switch these out eventually, but I, I really don't like cherry springs. All right, let's see if we can go raid. Yeah, today was just a, a short stream. We're gonna be streaming again tomorrow anyways, guys. We're doing the Tata 80 tomorrow. Um, so we're doing another really cool TKL from Wuche. Uh, let's see who we can go a raid. You know what? Why don't we raid? What's Patty doing? Zinzin Wong. Let's go raid Patty. She's doing a 380 by Noxary. Yeah, it's called the Tata 80, I think. I think that's how you pronounce it. All right, guys. Enjoy her stream. Say hi for all of us. Um, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. I appreciate all of you guys' support. I hope this kind of like also gave you guys some more perspective on the QK75, as well as the Obscura switches. I'll probably reuse these switches for some other stuff, but um, thank you guys so much. Are Spritz Springs still good? They are. I, I think TX are still my favorite though. Just like the most affordable for me. Take care, everyone. Love you guys. I hope you guys have a great, great day. Peace out, everybody. Um, and